Now, we've mentioned Yubel quite a bit in this issue, but haven't really gone into a lot of detail about them. And barring some kind of huge update in a structure deck or a core set, there really aren't enough cards to warrant- Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. It may not be Spooky Month anymore, but we do have one last straggler waiting for their time in the spotlight. The latest core set in the OCG, Phantom Nightmare, released on October 28th just in time for the most ghoulish of holidays, and they picked a cover card for an archetype I thought would stay buried in the ground forever. But fool that I am, as fate was tempted by my callous words. So now it's time to give this angel of suffering their due. We'll leave all the backstory for the Hero Explained video to cover, so now, let's call upon the Guardian of the Gentle Darkness, see how we can use the opponent's pain to our gain, then find some volunteers to enhance the entity that no binary can contain. Let's prepare the competition for an endless, restless sleep with you, Bell Explained. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the wonderful people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as Dragon Scales and save 5% on your order by using coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. So, what's the deal with you, Bell? Well, a lot of things, but so far as mechanics go, it's less a series of monsters and more the evolution of a single creature. And because the new support is less archetypal and more Ubel focused, let's do a brief overview of the core Ubel trio so you have a better idea of how the support is meant to work. Ubel is a level 10 Dark Fiend monster with zero attack and defense. They can't be destroyed by battle, and you take no battle damage in battles involving this card. So far, this sounds like Yu-Gi-Oh's most convoluted and difficult to play Spirit Reaper, but the fun part is that before damage calculation, when this face-up attack position card is targeted by an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack, essentially making you bell a walking magic cylinder that your opponent will see coming from a mile away. Unless, of course, your win condition is my opponent can't read turbo. But wait, the inconveniences don't stop there, because during your end phase, you have to tribute one other monster or destroy this card. That's right, you have to pay a subscription fee to keep this online. However, if it is destroyed, except by its own effect, its owner can special summon a Ubel, Terror Incarnate, from their hand, deck, or graveyard. This would end up encouraging duelists down one of two paths. Either including cards that forced your opponent to attack Ubel, think all-out attacks or battle mania, to make your opponent burn themselves, or blow up Ubel as soon as possible to evolve them into their next form, which immediately sees a huge upgrade in playability. Ubel, Terror Incarnate, is a level 11 monster, can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned by Ubel. Just about everything else is the same as base Ubel, but now you no longer have to pay a tribute every turn to keep it on field. Field. Instead, it's been replaced by an end phase trigger that destroys all other monsters on the field. This is a little counterintuitive because you end up blowing up all the monsters that need to attack Terra Incarnate for you to deal damage, and you can't exactly progress your game state on an empty board. But at least you're not paying an upkeep cost. And we won't have to wait long because if Terra Incarnate is destroyed, you can special summon a U Bell, the ultimate nightmare, from your hand deck or grave. And this is where things get spicy. It's a level 12 monster that can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned by the effect of Ubel Terror Incarnate. And here's where the little twist comes in, because now the damage reflection effect changes from having to be attacked while in attack position to any battle it's involved in while in attack position, meaning you can actually be proactive with Ultimate Nightmare. It even destroys the monster at battles, which is both a blessing and a curse. After all, you can't punch it again for more damage later on if it explodes, but at least it is removal in case the monster in question has a problematic effect. This is, or was, your main win condition because it's the only way to reliably deal damage without leaning on a number of gimmicks. It is a pretty cool effect, perfectly conveying Ubel's talent for turning their target's darker impulses against themselves to cause harm to themselves and others, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it was a nightmare to get working. Okay, now that we have a handle on what the deck was meant to do, let's take a look at the support that came after. First, we have Samsara Regenerating Lotus, a level 1 Dark Fiend monster with zero attack and defense, and you can tribute this card to special summon a Ubel monster from your deck. 
During your opponent's turn, when a monster effect is activated while you control a Ubel monster, as a quick effect, you contribute this card, and that effect becomes destroy one Ubel monster on the field. And during your end phase, if you control Ubel and this card is in your graveyard, you can either add it to your hand or special summon it. This is a fantastic enabler, getting out base Ubel at the drop of a hat, and because it comes back during the end phase, means it also gives you a free monster to tribute away for Ubel's maintenance cost. This means it won't be staying on the board, but if you have another monster you're willing to sacrifice, this means your opponent's gonna have to be wary of what monster effects they activate, for fear that they enable you, rather than harm you. This is far and away a huge upgrade over base Samsara Lotus, which requires you to have no spells and traps on field to get the revival, and the little Ubel arm in the art is a nice touch, referencing Ubel's incomplete energy form. And another thing I like about this is that it looks like it's eating its own face. Folks, have you ever been so trapped in the cycle of death and rebirth that you take a big old chomp out of your upper lip? Geist Grinder Golem is a level 8 Dark Fiend monster with 3000 attack and 300 defense, and you can reveal a Ubel monster in your hand to special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field, then you can special summon the revealed monster to your field. Once per turn, if this card battles a Ubel monster during damage calculation, your opponent gains 3000 life points. Note that in the grand scheme of things, that means you'll gain 3000 because at that point your opponent will have it. And if you special summoned a Ubel monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card to your opponent's field and you can only special summon Geist Grinder Golems once per turn. So this serves a number of useful functions. One, it gets base Ubel out of your hand easily. Two, it gives you a pretty big life point boost to help you out. Three, it gives your opponent a giant monster for Ultimate Nightmare to attack for tons of damage. And four, it gives you a pretty big life point bonus as a mandatory effect activated by your opponent. That's right, remember how everyone was losing their minds over Ken and Jen? Those two TCG exclusives from Age of Overlords that forces your opponent to activate a monster effect? Well, now Ubel has it too! Granted, because the effect was only during the battle phase, it won't unlock Triple Tactics talent, but that card sucks anyway. Triple Tactics Thrust, though, now that's a way better card. Partly because it doesn't care what phase the monster effect was activated in. This also fixes a pretty glaring incongruity between the game and the anime, because Basic Grinder Golem was used to make tokens for Ubel's Tribute Summon, which the tokens forbid in the physical game. So, if you need a Grinder Golem to help you with your plays, I'd very much suggest this alternate Geist. But not Altergeist. They know what they did. Spirit of Ubel is a cheeky nod to Spirit of Neos, perfect for Jaden's other ace monster. It has all the same stats as Ubel, as well as being immune to battle destruction and keeping you safe from battle damage. If this card is destroyed, you can special summon a base Ubel that is banished or is in your hand, deck, or graveyard, and when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if this card is special summoned in general, you can take a spell or trap card from your deck that mentions Ubel and either add it to your hand or set it. Now, prior to the Phantom Nightmare set, no such card like that existed, but thankfully, we now have a few nifty options that we can grab, all while acting as a great blocker in emergency situations and acts as a way to get the Ubel cycle started. Now, they don't look too jazzed about all this, but Ubel's doing their best Neos impression, remember? And they're really nailing down that strong, stoic look. The last card we'll cover in this section is a little funky. Neos Wise Man is a level 10 light spellcaster monster with 3000 attack and defense that can't be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by sending a face-up elemental hero Neos and Ubel on your field to the grave. Wise Man cannot be destroyed by card effects, and at the end of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the monster it battles, and you gain life points equal to that monster's defense. That can cause some pretty devastating swings in life points, but I'm gonna be honest, it still doesn't feel like it's worth it. I mean, they are tied to Jaden thematically, but they have no mechanical connection. Of course, none of that takes away from just how cool this card is, but it's so unwieldy that it's hard to justify playing. Like, how did they make a fusion of two ace monsters and not make it a fusion for the character whose whole deal is fusion summoning? Oh hey, look, they did that. Let's kick off our explanation of the extra deck with Elemental Hero Neos Kluger, a level 9 light spellcaster fusion monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense, requiring Elemental Hero Neos and Ubel as material. Like all Elemental Hero monsters, it must be fusion summoned, and before damage calculation, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to that opponent's monster's attack, and if this face-up card is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect while in its owner's control, you can special 
will summon a Neos Wise Man from your hand or deck, ignoring summoning conditions. Now this makes for a much more playable monster. You still have to run the extra Neos, sure, or the extra U-Bell depending on the kind of deck you're building, but now you don't need to get them on the field together. Just fire off the Neos Fusion and you're good to go. Just make sure Kluger doesn't get destroyed the turn you use it, because then you won't be able to actually float because of that special summon lock. Though once you're free of that restriction, you do have a great little line of play where, if your opponent has a monster bigger than Kluger, you ram into it, still deal a massive chunk of damage, then float into Wise Man, who can proceed to do that same amount of damage again, while getting you back some life points if it doesn't have zero defense for some reason. If your opponent has paid any life points to this game, you might just end up beating them on the spot. Or, if not, polish them off with any of your U-Bell burn effects. My only complaint is that it doesn't seem very fusion-y. It's not the least fusion-y out of the group, Brave Neos is basically just Neos in a more dynamic pose, but Kluger is just Neos in a U-Bell themed battleizer outfit. I know their whole deal is being morbid, but I think going full Necroz on U-Bell is a little much. Our last monster is the cover card of the new set, and this one's a bit of a doozy. Yubel Das Ewisch Liebe Vesta is a level 12 Dark Fiend fusion monster with zero attack and defense, requiring any Yubel monster and one or more effect monsters on the field as material. If this card is fusion summoned, you can burn your opponent for 500 damage for each fusion material used for its summon, so you can expect to do at least 1000 damage. It cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect, also you take no battle damage from battles involving this card. And at the end of the damage step, if this card battled an opponent's monster, burn your opponent for damage equal to that opponent's monster's attack, and if you do, banish that monster. So it's basically an ultimate nightmare with better removal, more protection, and you don't have to go through a million steps to get to it. It's so good that I'd almost say you don't even play the upgraded forms anymore as they can potentially end up being bricks, though they are still valid fusion material, which is good for the flexibility and also because it keeps any fusion substitute monster and super polymerization from being a complete board wipe. But this does now mean that super poly is now this deck's best weapon, which is also incredibly flavorful. I know some people will be belly aching about how powerful the card is, and I find myself agreeing sometimes, but Yubel literally manipulated multiple factions into helping create super polymerization just to make the super fusion god as part of their plan. So if any deck deserved to use the most notable spell speed 4 card in the game, it's this one. And this card just goes to show how good of a wingman Yubel can be. Alright, that's all of our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Mature Chronicle is a continuous spell card, and each time any number of U-Bell monsters or monsters that mention U-Bell are special summoned, place a Chronicle counter on this card. You can remove up to 5 Chronicle counters from your field to activate one of these effects. For 1, special summon a U-Bell from your grave. For 2, add one of your banished cards to your hand. For 3, you banish a card from your deck. 4, you destroy a card on the field. And 5, you add a Super Polymerization from your deck to your hand. This card is a reference to the never used in a wholesome way Spell Chronicle, also made use of by Yubel. Mature Chronicle has a wealth of utility effects you won't be upset to have on hand. Getting base Yubel out of your grave not only replaces the counter you used to get it, but gets the cycle started all over again. Banishing cards right out of your deck seems odd, but pairs nicely with adding one of those banished cards back to your hand. Not sure if you'll use them very often, but it does make for a great reference to the original Spell Chronicle. On the higher end, spot removal can solve a lot of problems, and the big payoff, getting Super Polymerization, which we've already outlined, is an amazing card for this deck. And while those may cost a lot of counters, even if the effect is a hard once per turn, you can activate as many Mature Chronicles as you want, meaning you can pull a 6 Samurai and get a bunch of different cards that generate you counters so that a main card can use them as fuel for their effects, getting you to your higher end effects twice as fast. And if you want to be a real daredevil, pair this up with the original Spell Chronicle. That's even more ways to generate those counters, and you can use Mature Chronicle to nab those banished cards back as well. You are giving up your whole hand to do this though, so don't go firing this combo off all willy-nilly. You'll have to be... mature about it. Nightmare Pain is a continuous spell card, and during your main phase, you can destroy a dark monster in your hand or on your face-up field, and if you do, add a U-Bell, or a card that mentions it except a copy of this card, from your deck to your hand. While you control a U-Bell monster, all your opponent's monsters that can attack must attack a U-Bell monster, and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving your U-Bell monsters. The first effect here is easily the strongest. Popping U-Bell or Spirit of U-Bell grants you another monster in the Pain loop, while searching you 
any of your support cards, because thankfully it also searches you spells and traps. It also compels your opponent's monsters to attack you, Bell, an effect that I'm surprised took this long to implement into the theme directly. This leaves us with our last effect, which I was struggling with for a long time. Oh, why would they print this when most U-Bells already do this? Even Spirit of U-Bell prevents battle damage, so how would you be able to make your opponent take any battle damage you would have taken when you can't take any at all? Is this just here in case your U-Bell effects get negated? Well, color me surprised because these whole your opponent takes any damage you would effects don't actually care if you're capable of taking damage. It can still prevent you from taking damage, like how Amazon a Swordswoman works, but the damage itself isn't required. It just lets you check what the damage would be and apply it to your opponent anyways. This means that Nightmare Pain allows you to be as proactive with all of your U-Bells as Ultimate Nightmare was. And, as an extra bonus, when you use Ultimate Nightmare or the new U-Bell Fusion, this means you're going to be doing double damage. All around, this is a fantastic card. It's a little strange they had U-Bell learn Vine Whip for the art, but hey, it's working for him. Eternal Favorite is a continuous trap card that, once per turn, lets you use one of two effects, but each effect can only be used once per turn in case you find yourself with multiple copies of these on board. Either you special summon one of your U-Bell monsters that are banished or are in your grave, and neither player can activate cards or effects when that monster is special summoned, or if you control base U-Bell, you discard a card and send this face-up card from your spell and trap zone to the grave to fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from either field as material, including a U-Bell monster. So we either get a free summon or a mini super poly, letting us scoop up our opponent's monsters into a big fusion. Or you could make Kluger if your opponent is on Elemental Hero Neos for some reason, but that's neither here nor there. This is another fantastic addition to the roster. And look, there's even a little Jaden in there. Oh, my heart can't stand it. Okay, that's all of our cards. Now I'm going to show you a couple of combos that you'll want in your back pocket when you play the deck. The first one is actually pretty simple. All you need is a single copy of Samsara Regenerating Lotus. Summon it, then tribute it to summon a U-Bell monster from your deck. You're going to want to get Spirit of U-Bell here, using its on summon effect to grab you Nightmare Pain. Play it, and use its first effect to pop Spirit to search for Eternal Favorite. Spirit's effect will trigger, getting us base U-Bell, then during the end phase, revive the Lotus in your graveyard so that you can tribute it off for U-Bell. Have Eternal Favorite set, and you've got yourself a makeshift Super Poly ready to go on your opponent's turn with at least four cards left in hand to do other things. But with one extra card, we can actually turn this into an OTK. If you can attack, that is. This version is a two-card combo. We'll still need Lotus, but we'll also still need a level 10 U-Bell monster, either base or spirit, or Geist Grinder Golem. We follow the same combo line, but when it comes to searching a card off of Nightmare Pain, instead of getting Eternal Favorite, grab either Geist or a level 10 U-Bell, whichever one you don't currently have. Then, use Geist's effect to special summon that level 10 U-Bell out of your hand while giving your opponent the Geist. In battle phase, attack into it with both U-Bells, dealing 6,000 damage thanks to Nightmare Pain. Then, since we're not under any kind of restriction, overlay your two U-Bells into a Gustav Max and clean up those remaining life points. So, now that we've learned a whole bunch about U-Bell, what do we do with them? Well, the main idea is to make your opponent regret summoning anything with a sizable attack stat, crashing as many U-Bells into it as possible. And if they summon a problem card, well, we scoop it up with our fusions. So what we need to do is add cards that increase our chances of seeing our combo pieces while shoring up our resources in case things go bunk. So what can we play to help them out? Well, in another turn of amazing flavor, the Sacred Beast support actually works really well here. Not so much the actual Sacred Beasts, though. While we do have continuous spells and traps, they aren't exactly synergizing with our Chaotic Gremlin. Opening of the Spirit Gates, though, is fantastic because, as it turns out, U-Bell and Spirit of U-Bell are fiends with zero attack and defense, so we can use it to revive them, and even get a search off of Spirit to replace the discard. This also means we can run Dark Beckoning Beast as a way to search the gate, and because of its extra normal summon, we don't even have to give up using Lotus that turn, and is incidentally nice tribute fodder for base U-Bell. It's kinda crap. Mystic Tomato used to be an old school way to play U Bell out of your deck, but this is the future. Now we're on Mystic Potato. Destroy it while on the field with Nightmare Pain, and now you have another way to get the level 10 U Bells onto the field. No problem. Being able to smash face into your opponent's monsters is cool and all, but in this era of Yu Gi Oh!, you can expect your opponent to be on monsters with ways to deal with your U Bells. So, how do you keep them from being a problem without just killing them outright, thus robbing us of a way to reflect damage? Well, there's the usual way, negate with cards like Imperm, Chalice, or Veiler, but 
I've got a more permanent solution. Kaijus. They get around a ridiculous amount of protections, and now you have a giant punching bag to keep using your effects on. For best results, make sure you run Radian, that way you have more dark monsters that you can pop for nightmare pain in a pinch. Taking a page out of our good friends the Makonkos book, Double Edged Sword can pile on the damage real quick. Making our opponent's monsters bigger makes our onboard damage reflection better, and the damage from Nightmare Pain gets way better. And since we can't take battle damage from those battles, we get away with it scot free. As for a silly tech pick, consider joining the lore gang with some branded cards. That's right, with the lack of limits placed on the U Bell cards, you could run a branded core to give you more aggressive options to help with your setup. Fusion Deployment can get U-Bell out of your deck if you run Neos Kluger in your extra deck, and Sanctifier Dragon gives your opponent a big monster that your U-Bell can then crash into later. And hey, both decks love running Super Polymerization, so adding one of its best enablers seems like an incredible deal. Alright, that's everything I know about U-Bell, but how does it measure up against the Nova Scale? Novelty U-Bell doesn't represent the first monster that punished your opponent for attacking it, but it was the first theme to really make that playstyle a priority. Was it practical? Hell no, but it did lay the groundwork for damage reflection effects moving forward, with our recent support benefiting from the experimentation that's taken place since U-Bell took those first few steps, so I'm giving them a 4 in novelty. Objectivity In terms of older cards, there's very little to worry about in terms of power level. In regards to our newer cards, despite taking Super Polymerization to a whole new level of power, I'm still skeptical that it'll rock the boat. There's a lot of points of interaction here that I'm afraid the deck still can't play through, and while the wins will be satisfying, I'd keep my expectations in check in terms of viability. U-Bell gets a 5 in Objectivity. Versatility while not easy to slot into a lot of decks, the Sacred Beast support not only helps keep the deck running smoothly, but fusion decks are going to have a riot finding ways to slot this into their playlines. So for its narrow but still existent capability for splashing, U-Bell gets a 2 in versatility. Awesomeness Despite some misgivings, I'm pretty stoked about this card. The new support helps solves a lot of problems with the theme, and while it does pretty much relegate Terror Incarnate and Ultimate Nightmare into the power crept corner, it's still really cool to see these cards being used in a modern context. Not to mention that all the little references in the cards are just right, so I'm giving you bell a 4 in awesomeness, meaning this sadistic saboteur gets a 15 on the Nova scale. And that's all I have to say about you bell I'm still flabbergasted that this has gotten the corset treatment, but don't mistake that for anger because these cards are hella cool. I'm always happy when ways to win the game get recontextualized, so you have to handle and play them on a whole new axis. Utilize Jaden's Guardian well, and that zero attack is going to match your opponent's chances of victory. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Will the new U-Bell cards teach the world their pain? Or are they going to stay spaced out for a while? And which one's your favorite? I think the new U-Bell Fusion is a 10 out of 10 design. It looks fantastic. Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. Get this leaves as strong as dragon scales that also come with their own lore while saving 5% on your order. Just make sure to use code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including the illustrious Quasar Commanders Frankie and Marluxia as a girl, Nebula Navigators 3rd Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagdell, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Chibi Gohan, Christopher Fuss, Clock's Work, Danny Bound, Dark Dragon X830, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Hydrocraft 135, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Picotta, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Molly Renata, Muziki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Sir Knight JCB, Skybuster Leo, The Wizard Moose, URTV667 and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Borger with a Shotgun, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Emini, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Howling Zangetsu, Herbal D, 
In Blink, Jester Design, Kale the Dragon, Carp, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh, Lord whoop de doo Manga Pages, Matt Simmons, Michael Shimabukuro, Mustafa Aiden, Nitromo, Psycho Reaper Gaming, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, The Legendary Raven, Tucker Ordorn, Venusian Teapot, and Zeldreka, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey in covering all of Yu-Gi-Oh's archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits, and participate in monthly custom card reviews, I'd be super grateful if you'd consider checking out my Patreon in the description or joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to hear more about Yubel, check out my Heroes Explained video for more info about their backstory. And also like 100 plus hero cards, there's a reason it's over 2 hours. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye